Hey everybody, Jochen again with my fifth uh, video on my YouTube channel about composing, producing music with Cakewalk by BandLab. Um, today we're going to talk about um, a very cinematic, uh, epic sounding um, string ostinato, a very cool string motif. Um, we're going into details uh, about the single uh, string sections, uh, about the accompaniment, uh, percussion bed and stuff like this. Let's not waste any time, dive right into it. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and sorry for the radio silence in the last weeks. Um, I've been busy with uh, diverse things, deadlines, projects, uh, summer holiday <laughs> uh, and system maintenance. Well, you name it, I guess uh, it's the same for all of us. And uh, now it's the third time I'm starting this video because I s somehow did have some audio problems and I hope that this time with new settings I sorted this out. Okay, as I already mentioned, we today we're going to talk about a cinematic epic string ostinato accompanied by a percussion bed and uh, a synth bass pulse um, in a handsome style or in a style of modern trailer uh, trailer music tracks um, and uh, Hollywood movie blockbuster soundtracks. Well so that uh, to 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 let you know what i'm talking about first have a listen well i think it's that's very epic uh, that's very moving forward to create momentum and it's uh, the strings alone, if we have a closer listen to these, um, are sounding very, uh, not sophisticated, but it's it's not the case that I only um, uh, let every single string section play the same in octaves. Uh, there's a lot going on, but as you see in the end, it's it's actually not as much, but uh, the, but we do have kind of variations between the sections. Let's have a listen to the strings in solo. Yeah, very cool. Let's dive uh, into the details. First of all, uh, we are watching, we're looking at the uh, low staccatos. It's from Metropolis Arc 1, low spiccato in octaves. Where are they? Ah. As you can see, um, these, uh, is a, this is a simple pulse on quarter notes, now on, on every quarter note uh, with short notes. Um, but what's very important about this is uh, are the velocities, um, especially the velocity of the note after an accent. The second note after this accent, this one, the second note after this accent, the second note after this accent and so on because that's uh, the way uh, a human string player would play this unless the composer uh, unless it's, it's uh, written differently in the score but um, let me demonstrate something um, I'm changing the velocity of this these second notes and make it a bit higher so that you can all listen what I'm talking about <laughs> In my ears, not really convincing. Um, let's undo these last steps. Um, and please uh, keep in mind what I just said. In these uh, scenarios, uh, repeating notes, please um, have a look at the second note after an accent. Uh, this 
has to be way with a low, uh, way lower velocity. And as you can see, we're dealing with chords uh, G, E flat, and C. Um, and to be more detailed, it's G minor, E flat major, and not C minor, it's C major. Um, in the key of G minor, we would uh, expect a C minor, but I'm using a C major. This is the subdominant of G minor, and um, to have the subdominant in, in major, it's always an, an uplifting feel, which uh, is being used a lot in, in superhero movies or yeah, Marvel style. Try it out. Play a G minor and the subdominant C major. Yeah, okay. Now let's hop on to the next section. This is the celli. These are playing accents on every quarter note as well, but uh, with two um, sixteenth notes to give a little bit of a variation. Yeah, um, this is a patch from what is it? Orchestral Tools, yeah, Berlin Strings. And then if uh, if you're wondering how I can only play back the celli, um, despite I soloed the whole strings, uh, for all of you who don't know this, you can select anything and then hit the shift key and the space bar and then you're only addition auditioning uh, the selected clips now i want to hear only the jelly so i'm hitting uh, shift and space bar now i want uh, to add the low staccatos hitting the shift bar and space bar only plays back the selected clips you can do this as well in the piano roll yeah let's hop on to the next string section this time the violas these are again from uh, orchestral tools berlin strings uh, nothing special here uh, all the time the same uh, across all chord changes in the first three bars we have g minor and e flat major so these are chord tones and the last bar of the motif is uh, in bar 37 it's c major these are also chord tones if you uh, take into account that the b flat is the seventh of c major i could have changed this b flat to a c but uh, with a b flat it sounds a bit more interesting okay the next one would be no oh, let's listen to the violas together with the celli and the basses the low staccatos <laughs> This alone is sounding very cool. Okay, let's hop on to the second violence, again from Orchestral Tools, Bird and Strings. Here you can see that uh, we do have an arpeggio, an upward arpeggio, and we changed only uh, the notes in for, for the E flat major, and for the C major, we changed the D to an E flat and then the E flat to an E natural to give this change to a C major chord uh, a bit more emphasis. Let's listen to this. Now let's listen to the first, uh, second violins, violas, Shelly and the low staccatos together. Okay, now let's hop on to the first violence. This time, um, again, something different. Rhythmically, again, only 16th notes.
yeah what's happening here in the first two bars I'm using uh, tones from G minor the B flat and the D but uh, to give a bit of bit of variation I, I added these two guys and I you would expect to use the E flat but uh, I'm using the E natural because I'm using it later on in the C major as well and it, it it's kind of sounding more interesting and the F is the seventh of G major after that we do have an E flat major uh, and the D right here is the major seventh of uh, the E flat major which uh, is being used a lot it's very common yeah and here we do have a downward uh, movement in the uh, over the C major chord um, yeah this again orchestral tools burn in strings and I did double this with a patch from um, Metropolis Arc 1 I guess yeah the high spiccato in octaves these are playing the same like the first violin okay now let's listen to the whole string string section again wow i like it a lot now let's move on to the accompaniment um this is a uh, a bass pulse from Keep Forest Devastator War Zone. Yeah, just a eighth notes lining out the root tones of the chords. Well, we could listen to this with the low staccatos together. And now with everything. Yeah, it's a, a very great addition to the to the whole string sections. I I'm muting this again, and please have a listen without the bass pulse. Now again with the bass pulse. Yeah, I like it a lot. And now let's go to the percussion section here I used um, timpanis which are only playing the root tones of the chords and these are timpanis from uh, East West Symphonic Orchestra Platinum I like this a lot uh, it's a combined patch with rolls and hits you do have a lot of controls um, in one patch yeah I'm using this uh, very frequently this one is a percussion loop from Shimmer Shake from In Session Audio. Yeah, In Session Audio, Shimmer Shake Strike. This is a, a beast of, of uh, when it comes to percussion accompaniment. Uh, you do have a lot of sm small things which are basically doing this, what you are hearing right now. Adding shimmering stuff, uh, high percussions. You can change patterns, you can create your own patterns and accents and uh, choose instruments. We're really a great addition to my toolbox. Next one would be um, Chunky XL Percussions from Orchestral Tools again. The Concert Toms. Yeah, Concert Toms. These uh, are mapped out in a very special way every intonation every pitch is a single velocity the higher the pitch the higher the velocity loud softer even softer way more softer and it goes very soft in the end yeah so you do have a lot of control and as you can see these are a lot of <coughs> sorry uh, velocity layers now move on to the next one 
This is again Chunky XL percussion from Orchestral Tools. I think these are the two pens, yeah. Yeah, these sounding these are sounding great. And I did EQ them a bit. Yeah. And it gives them uh, them a bit more mids and highs to have this to do hear the stroke a bit more. Um and uh, gave a bit of compression and uh, console emulation uh, saturation. And I think I changed the release tail. Yes. With a long release tail out of the box it would sound like this. Yeah. Uh, low frequency summing up to a very muddy sound. Um, and I'm doing this a bit more extreme like I did have it before. Yeah. Now it's very short and snappy. But I want to have a bit more. Yeah, that's okay. And I think I applied some equalization with the Pro Channel, yeah. I rolled off some um, resonance frequencies. Turning off. Turning on. Yeah, just uh, some frequencies that were uh, sonically very annoying. In the end, we do have a low boom patch from Damage 2 from Heaviosity. Yeah, cool long release tail. And then one of my favorite percussion patches, um, Handsome Repercussions from Spitfire Audio. I think it's the low booms, yeah. Patch low hits. And within this patch, uh, the low booms. And I took the Chunky XL mix and uh, changed it a bit. And these are sounding like this. Be aware. These are really uh, epic, massive gorilla stomps. Wow. Listen to these babies. Okay, the whole percussion section together. No, the shimmer shake is missing. Okay, and now everything together. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little video, these little insights and detailed look in in a <clears throat> what what I find a very cool motive. Um, if you did enjoy, please uh, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, or even leave a comment and hit the bell to be notified when I'm uploading a new video. So long, until next time. See you. Take care.